Hi everyone, it's Nicole and welcome back to another card making video tutorial. Today we're going to have some fun with white paste and brand new products from the Hero Arts June 2023 My Monthly Hero release with these ocean themed cards. This is always one of my very favorite type of cards to create for whatever reason. I don't know why, but I love it and this, the add-ons in the release are amazing. Now each month I create with the add-ons only, not the main or premium kit. So these products will are ones that will be available um, even after the kit sells out. I hope that makes sense. So I am going to start with the color layering stencils and build first the beach floor. This is called the color layering beach floor stencils. It is a set of three and I will be using Hero Hues core inks today to create my scene. I'm going to start with some caramel ink, caramel ink, pardon me, and I am going to do the beach feet along the bottom of my four and a quarter by five and a half inch white panel. Next, we're going to grab some mist core ink and we are going to ink up all of the rest of this design. So it's like a sandy beach and the rest moves out towards the ocean. This is going to be my lightest color for the ocean floor. I am working on my Simon Says Stamp glass mat and um, I'm holding it down, but you're going to see me move to using my magnet from my Misty to hold things in place. The glass mat is magnetized and that is going to help hold everything down a little bit easier than having me try to hold on to it. I also think that maybe I should try the picket fence pouncers um, for some of these detailed things in a future video. For my second stencil, I'm actually only going to use the top part of the stencil and not do the shell and starfish and things like that along the bottom. So we're going to use some paradise ink here and we're going to ink up our second layer. Now the key to both of my cards today is that I'm going to do all of my inking and once I'm done with that and I have cleaned my stencils really well with some warm water or soap and water or cleaner, I am then going to take white paste and add some detail to both of the designs and it's going to be a little different uh, for both cards. The third stencil in this set is the third layering for the water. In this case, I am going to use the color Bermuda. And then it's also the sand along the beach where we did our feet earlier. This time I will be using some sand colored ink. This is a little bit lighter brown. I'm going to clean off my brush on a microfiber cloth over on the side. And then we're going to take this sand color and ink up along the bottom edge. And you can see that the caramel ink really still shows up beautifully even with our sand color. Look how beautiful. Even without the paste, this is absolutely stunning. So now I'm just kind of laying my stencil out. I want to look and see um, kind of at this point I knew I wanted to add white paste but I am just checking uh, how I think I'm going to do that. So there is my panel. Let's go ahead and ink our second panel so we can do all of the paste at one time. Uh, with paste it is kind of messy and I like to keep that uh, <laughs> kind of contained to one process if you will. I will tell you I did all of my inking and paste one evening and came back uh, the next day, my next work day, and I added all of the die cuts and greetings and all of the finishing detail. Now this is a single stencil. This is called Listen to the Sea Stencil and it's one of my favorites from the release. In fact, everything I'm using here today is a favorite. I'm going to use six colors of blue ink starting with Mist, then Paradise, pardon me. I want an ombre effect all the way down the panel. I even think this would be stunning, just inked up or you could use paste. There's lots of different ways you could do this. Next is Bermuda. Uh, once you have it colored or 
the way you want, you could frame this. Uh, maybe do a five by seven and put it in a frame or something. I think it would be absolutely beautiful as decor. Next, I am going to be using, and of course I forgot the color, aquatic, I believe. Yes, then deep ocean. So we've gone from the aquas to more of the blues. And finally, we're gonna finish with nautical, which is our deepest and darkest color in this set. It's a very great navy blue color. Now, when I remove this, you can see that, of course, I've inked the words and not the background. So I'm going to take my aqua and blue blending brushes and really without cleaning them, I am going to very lightly, I tapped off some of the extra ink and I came in off the side, I am going to start inking over the words. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my aqua brush, just to give the color, a, or pardon me, give the background a little bit of color. There is our stencil background. Next, I have my favorite Hero Arts palette knife. They're white paste, which is incredible. And we're going to start with the stencil. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift the stencil just a little bit where that foam is in my background. And I am going to have to use two stencils and probably more than likely if you want to recreate this, you may have to give it a little bit of drying time um, so that you can use the second stencil and not smudge your work. Or you're gonna see how Nicole did it when she was in a hurry uh, and I just kind of hold it up. So I am using just the tip of my knife for this and I am really kind of laying it on chunky because I want it to have texture. This isn't how I normally apply, but I don't want the white paste all over the water. So I'm taking that little tip of my palette knife and just laying the foam or creating that foam from the water or from the sea with the tip of my palette knife along the edge. When we remove it, it's going to leave us with this absolutely amazing detail. So we're just gonna kinda keep on here. And the, the little tip on this palette knife helps a ton. And I'm gonna lift that up. And this is going to dry and just leave fantastic uh, texture, detail, all of that good stuff. So let me go clean that stencil, or maybe I'll hold off one moment. I'm actually going to line up now my Listen to the Sea stencil, and I am going to go completely all over this with a very, very fine layer. So for this one, I'm using the entire edge of the palette knife, and I'm laying it down and scraping that white paste super thin. This is going to give more of a nice little detailed outline of all of the text. So when you lay it down like this, it just gives a peek of the color of the original color of the stenciling around the edges and it's going to set off beautifully against that background. So I really scraped it thin before pulling the stencil off and look at that. So, so pretty. Then I am going to go in with one of my other color layering beach floor stencils and I'm holding it up and really just applying my paste along the edge. Again, with just the tip of my palette knife, kind of chunky, so it has tons of texture. There we go. And I'm going to set both of these aside to completely air dry while I work on cleaning up all of my stencils, palette knife, and glass mat. Don't forget to put the lid back on your paste so that it doesn't dry out. I have found that the Hero Arts paste actually is probably my favorite. It works great. It and Picket Fence, I have not had some of the trouble I've had with other pastes drying out. These are the Fancy Cuts Sea Creatures. And I did not even cut mine apart. I actually just die cut all of them. I wasn't exactly sure how, what all I wanted to use. From this set, for both cards, I will be using the turtle, the crab, the starfish, and a shell. 
So that is one of the reasons I opted not to use those stencil pieces for the um, beach floor background. Using soft olive and moss inks, we are going to ink up the turtle. This is a very, very fast way to color an image, and I'm even gonna use a little leftover caramel ink to deepen and darken some of the places on my sea turtle. He is so cute, by the way. I really, really like this image. I envision for my card, instead of using the Listen to the Sea stencil as the focal point, it's more of an interesting background that we will then pop the turtle on top of and use greetings from another brand new product from the June release called Sea Quotes. And we're going to use those as our greeting. So it's more of a really interesting, fun text background rather than the actual sentiment of the card. Now we definitely need to add some detail to our turtle. We want his little spots, we want his eye to really pop. And when I'm completely done coloring, I will add that detail with a black or with black and white glaze pens. And that's gonna make the face come to life. I am gonna use that black pen again for the nostril here in just a little bit. You could color this with markers as well. Just so many ways to add your color on here. Just adding my little white spots, kind of just really following the detail of the die. And then we're going to pop up our turtle with foam adhesive right in the center of our background. So I attach the background to my card base and I will tell you, see that little string that's our string hair. I did not even notice that it looks like a hair got caught in my paste. So I am using some tweezers and I am pulling this out. I was able to get it removed, but oh, I was so irritated. I left this in so that I can show you <laughs> the things that go wrong. Um, I get a lot that um, I, I know with edited videos, it often looks like it's so super easy and everything comes off seamlessly without a hitch. And that is not the case 99% of the time. So I'm going to use Seize the Day for this card. This is from the C Quotes stamp set. And one of the things I love, first, I love the font. It's the same font that was used in the Listen to the Sea stencil, which I love. But there are coordinating dies, and I am here for a coordinating sentiment die that goes with a stamp set. I don't know about you guys, but I love that. So I'm going to show you how I get multiple or ombre effect. I was going to say multiple color, but ombre effect greetings with my inks and these kind of greeting stamp sets. I did add a few pretty pink posh pearls, kind of like bubbles coming up from the turtle. I really don't want to cover up too much of the background. The background is definitely, I, I want it to still sh be a showcase, even though it's not the focal point. Maybe that's how I should say that. Okay, let's go ahead and add our images to our second card before we stamp our greetings. I am going to pick the one I want to use so it guides me with what I want to add to the card. And this is let's let the sea set you free. And we're going to use these three images that I stated before the starfish, a shell or a clam, and then the crab. And I'm going to use pale tomato and cherry inks to ink up my little crab and even a little brown just left over from my blending brush that caramel color just to deepen and darken a couple little areas it's always a good idea guess i added a little extra ink doesn't have to be super perfect and we're going to use some yellow shades for the remaining images I did glue the crab directly to the card 
because he slightly overlapped some of that foam and I felt like that just worked a little bit better here. And then we're gonna take our black pen and add in some detail. We're gonna use some butter bar, spicy mustard, I think I even pulled in a little red left over on my blending brush because I felt like they looked a little too sa this much the same. Some fawn ink, maybe. Maybe that's what I used instead. Just to deepen and darken one of them. And we're gonna glue these down. And again, where it slightly overlaps the foam, I just chose to glue that down a little bit. Yeah, here's where I added the red to the starfish. gives it a little bit more of an orange effect. There we go. Perfect. And it's a very simple, easy scene, but so cute. Now the greetings are a pretty nice size, so I feel like they make a statement on their own. And now is when we are going to go ahead and ink these up, and I'm just going to take a scrap of my white cardstock And I like to start with my lightest color, in this case, mist. And I'm gonna stamp that a couple of times. Then along the bottom, I'm going to add Bermuda or Paradise, maybe both, so that it, it kind of is all those aqua shades and it just slowly has an ombre effect. Now where those inks meet, I do, you, if you have your blending brush out, you can tap that to blur that edge. I was using my finger, being lazy. Um, and there you get your ombre effect greeting. Let's go ahead and do our second card. Seize the day. I love the little punny play on words. And this is a little bit smaller, so I'm only going to use uh, one of the lighter blue shades and then nautical along the bottom. And then we're gonna grab the coordinating dies and die cut these before we finish up both of the card designs with a little embellishment to finish it perfectly. So here I have die cut my greetings. Look how awesome they die cut. And we are gonna pop these up with foam adhesive as well. Now, I felt like even though these greetings are awesome, the Everyday Sentiment Strips from Hero Arts would be a fantastic addition to kind of make one of them into more of a thank you card, I guess, if you will. Um, and one is, well, they're both are kind of thank you cards <laughs> now that I look at it. I did not have to re-stamp or die cut these everyday sentiment greetings either because I um, have all of these left over. Remember, with any of these sentiment strip stamp sets from Hero Arts, you stamp the whole thing. It's one stamp image, and then you use a strip die to die cut it. So I had loads of these left over. I keep them right in my sentiment or my uh, storage packet pocket envelope. Oh my gosh, you guys, I can't talk. And I simply grabbed it and I started piecing it together. I'm using a Stardust glitter pen to add some additional detail for the sandy beach. I've already popped up Hi Friend and I Appreciate You on the color layering beach floor. And for Seize the Day, we're going to pop up You Are Amazing and Thank You. Now I do need to add, I think, a few pearls to the Let the Sea Set You Free so we're gonna grab a more minty color of pearls for this one than the darker blue that I used on the previous card. Just a few scattered throughout, I think just tie it all together perfectly. And then I know this won't surprise any of my viewers, we're gonna add a heart to the turtle and a heart to the crab to completely finish it off. And I'm going to use some of the Trinity Stamps white jelly hearts here. I'm going to use kind of the medium size and then the tiny small size for the crab. And that is going to be it, friends. I hope you've enjoyed this video featuring fun ways to use white paste 
and create some ocean themed underwater scene cards. The supplies I use to create my cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for joining me today for another paper crafting tutorial. I love being able to share with this incredible community of crafters. I want to give a huge shout out and special thank you to my amazing Patreon members. If you're interested in joining Patreon, please click the link in the description underneath the video here on YouTube. Patreon is a private community where you can support more of what I do. There's exclusive content, you'll receive a handmade birthday card from me during your birthday month, monthly lives for my top tier patrons, and more. We would love to have you join our growing community. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click the like button, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you're always notified when I have a video or go live. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you again next time.